PPP operation. Let's recall that the HDLC is the default serial encapsulation method when connecting two Cisco routers. Make sure you understand that that's when we connect two Cisco routers. Uh, with an added protocol type field, the Cisco version of HDLC is proprietary and can only work with other Cisco devices. However, there is a need to connect to a non-Cisco router from time to time. Um, and in some industries, they may not have all Cisco routers. They may have a combination of many different types, depending on when things were purchased. So we have PPP encapsulation for this use. PPP encapsulation has been carefully designed to retain compatibility with most commonly used supporting hardware. PPP encapsulation data frames for transmission over layer two data physical links. PPP establishes a direct connection using serial cables, phone links, trunk lines, cellular phones, uh, specialized radio links, or fiber optic. PPP contains three main components. You have HDLC protocol for encapsulation, encapsulating datagrams over your point-to-point -point links. Uh, it's extensible link control protocol or LCP to establish, configure, and test the data link connections and the family of network control protocols to establish and configure different network layer protocols like IPv4, IPv6, Apple Talk, Novell, IPX, and SNA uh, control protocol. Some of the advantages of PPP is PPP is not proprietary like HDLC is. PPP includes many features not available in HDLC. You have link quality management feature that monitors the quality of the link. If too many errors are detected, PPP takes down that link. Uh, it supports both PAP and CHAP authentication. LCP sets up the PPP connection and its parameters. Our NCPs handle higher layer, layer protocol configurations and the LCP terminates the PPP connection. So at the physical layer, PPP can use synchronous physical media such as lease line services and asynchronous physical media such as those that use basic telephone services for modem dial-up connections. And yes, modem dial-up connections still exist. The LCP functions within the data link layer and has a role in establishing, configuring, and testing the data link connection. With LCP, it establishes the point-to-point -point link, it negotiates and sets up control options on the WAN data link, and uh, that's what's hint the data link data link the the WAN data link are handled by the NCPs. So. LCP provides automatic configuration of the interface at each end, including handling varying limits on packet size, detecting common misconfiguration errors, terminating that link, and determining when a link is functioning properly or when it is failing. And remember with PPP, if the link is failing, it's going to shut it down. PPP uses the LCP to offer service options. Uh, some of these options are primarily used for negotiating and frame checking when implementing the point-to-point -point controls specified by the administrator. PPP is going to permit um, multiple network layer protocols to operate on the same communication link. And for every network layer protocol used, PPP uses a separate NCP. So, PPP uses NCP to negotiate the layer three protocols that will be used to carry data packets and they provide functional fields containing standardized codes to indicate the network layer protocol type that the PPP encapsulates. So some of our protocol fields are listed here. Here they are listed in hex. You've got your 8021, that's your IPv4 control protocol. 8057 is your IPv6 
a control protocol. Then you have your different protocols for your OSI network layer, Apple Talk, Novell, Link Control, Password Authentication, and the Challenge Handshake Authentication Protocol. Here is the PPP frame structure. We have the flag, address, control, protocol, data, FCS, and flag. Because remember with the HDLC, you have protocol and data, just not control data. Uh, the flag is a single byte that indicates the beginning or end of a frame. The address is a single byte that contains the binary sequence 11111111. And it's the standard broadcast address. PPP does not assign individual station addresses. You have the control, and that is a single byte that consists of the binary sequence 00000011, which calls for transmission of user data in an unsequenced frame. This provides the connectionless link service that does not require the establishment of your data links or your link stations. And on your point-to-point -point link, the destination node does not need to be addressed. So PPP, the address field is set at hex 0xff and for the broadcast address. And both PPP peers agree to perform address and control field compression using the LCP negotiation. And the address field is not included. Next, with HDLC and this PPP frame, we have the protocol. It is two bytes that identify the protocol encapsulation in your information field of the frame. The two byte protocol field identification identifies that the protocol is the PPP payload. If both PPP peers agree to perform protocol field compression during LCP uh, the LCP negotiation, your protocol field is one byte for the protocol identification in the range of OX00-00 to OX00 FF. Um, the most up-to-date values of the protocol field are specified in the most recent assigned numbers request for comments or the most common or the most current RFC. Next, we have our data, and that is zero or more bytes that contain the datagram. Then we have our frame check sequence, or FCS. Um, that's normally at 16 bits or two bytes. Um, and by prior agreement, consisting, consenting PPP's impl implementations can use a 32-bit or four-byte uh, FCS to improve error detection. Your LCPs can negotiate modifications to your standard PPP frame structure and modify frames are always distinguishable from your standard frames. There are three phases um, when we're establishing a PPP session. Uh, the first phase is the link establishment. It's kind of like shall we negotiate. LCP must first open the connection and negotiate uh, configuration options. It can it completes when the receiving router sends a confirmation acknowledgement frame to the router initiating the connection. In phase two, it basically determines the link quality. Maybe we should discuss some details about quality or maybe not. Uh, let's see what's going on. Um, LCP tests the link to determine whether the link quality is sufficient to bring up the network layer protocol. Because keep in mind, PPP does look at the quality uh, of that link because it shuts it down if it's poor quality. In phase three, uh, the network protocol negotiation is something like, yes, I'll leave it uh, to the NCPs to discuss higher level, level details. Um, so it's been set up. So after the LCP has finished the link quality determination phase and has decided that the link is good, the appropriate NCP can separately configure the network layer protocols and bring them up and take them down at any time. Uh, LCP operations include provisions for link establishment, link maintenance, and link termination. 
So once it's established, you need to maintain it and then you need to be able to terminate it when it's needed. Uh, the LCP operation uses the three classes of LCP frames to accomplish work um, of each of the three of the LCP phases. You have link establishment frames, the establish and configure a link. You have configure request, configure acknowledgement, configure um, NAC, and then you have configure reject. Uh, link maintenance frames, manage and debug a link. We've got code reject, protocol reject, echo request, echo reply, and discard request. And then you have your link termination frames that terminate the link. So that's terminate request and terminate acknowledgement. During link maintenance, your LCP can use messages to provide feedback and test the link. You have your echo request and reply. You have your discard request and it can be used to test the link. You have code reject and protocol reject pro provides feedback from one device receives in an invalid frame due to either an unrecognized LCP code or the LCP frame type or a bad protocol identifier. Here we are looking at the LCP packet. You'll notice that the LCP packet is within the variable data. We have the code and the code field is, a one, is one byte in length and it identifies the type of LCP packet. Next we have our identifier and that identifier is a field of one byte and is used to match packet requests and replies. Then we have our length and the length field is two bytes in length and indicates the total length including all fields of the LCP packet. And then we have our data and the data field is zero or more bytes as indicated in the length field. Each of the LCP packets is a single LCP message and it consists of your LCP code field identifying um, the type of LCP packet, an identifier field so that the requests and replies can be matched, and a length field indicating the size of that LCP packet and LCP packet type specific data. Also, each of our LCP packets has a specific function in the exchange of configuration information depending on its packet type. The code field of the LCP packet identifies the packet type. Here we'll see that the LCP code 1 is the configure request. You have LCP code 2 is the configure acknowledgement. Configure 3 is config NAC. 4 is configure reject, 5 is terminate request, and 6 is terminate acknowledgement. Code 7 is code reject, code 8 is protocol reject, code 9 is echo request, 10 is echo reply, and 11 is discard request. With PPP, you do have configuration options. Some of the optional functions include authentication using PAP or CHAP, uh, compression using either stacker or predictor, and multi-link that combines two or more channels to increase the WAN bandwidth. After your link has been initiated, your LCP passes the control over to the appropriate NCP. And although it's initially designed in IP packets, PPP can carry data from multiple network layer protocols by using a modular approach in its implementation of PPPs um, by allowing the LCP to set up the link and then transfer the details of a network protocol to the specific NCP. And each network protocol has a corresponding NCP and each NCP has a corresponding RFC. So you have um, NCPs for IPv4, IPv6, Apple Talk, uh, IPX, uh, and many other ones, and they all have the RFCs set up for them. After the LCP has been configured uh, and authenticated, the base link, the appropriate NCP is takes over to complete the specific configuration of the network layer uh, protocol 
that's being used. When NCP has successfully configured the network layer protocol, your network protocol is in the open state of the established LCP link. Uh, and at this point, PPP can carry the corresponding network layer protocol packets. Uh, an example um, of this is an example of the NCP layer works using IPv4, which is your most common layer 3 protocol still. And it's shown here. After LCP has established the link, the routers exchange IPCP messages negotiating options specific to the IPv4 protocol. I see IPCP is responsible for configuring, enabling, and disabling the IPv4 modules uh, on both ends of the link. IPv6 is an NCP with the same responsibilities for IPv6. Uh, your IPCP negotiates two options. You either have compression and that allows devices allows your devices to negotiate algorithms to compress TCP IP headers to save bandwidth. And you have your IPv4 address, and this allows the initiating device to specify an IPv4 address to use for routing IP over the PPP link um, or to request an IPv4 address for the responder. After NCP process is complete, the link goes into the open state and LCP takes over again in a link maintenance phase. The link traffic consists of any possible combination of LCP, NCP, and network layer protocol packets. When data transfer is complete, the NCP terminates the protocol link. LCP terminates the PPP connection.